Welcome back to Ducoscopy TV. Now the US energy market is growing daily, but it's not without its challenges. Here to discuss some of the alternative energy options is David Mapley from City Windmills. David, thank you for coming back in. Good afternoon, Monica. Now we're talking about the US energy market in particular today. Has there been a concerted effort towards renewable energy or is there still quite a lot of areas, areas sorry, which are untapped, would you say? Well, since you had uh, President Obama in power, you switched from an oil-based president from Texas in the past to one who is quite progressive and has really championed alternative energies, be it solar or wind or biomass and other type of uh, renewable energy sources. So the US has certainly become greener in theory. So you said greener in theory. Now, there seems to be this sort of idea in America that we need oil or these sort of dirty energies to survive, but other people are saying, no, we're not. And if you look, there's been problems such as brownouts and energy just not being available to sure. households. It's not getting there. So how do they overcome them? What are the main problems, would you say? Well, first of all, let's look at how energy is produced in the US. Oil is what less than 1% of energy or electricity uh, production in the US. It's 42% coal, which we all know is highly polluting, and uh, you have problems in China from coal pollution. So uh, the, the US isn't, isn't exactly clean when it comes to producing its energy. Uh, renewables like solar is 1%, wind is 3%, uh, you have nuclear, which is 20%, which of course is now a political hot potato worldwide. So the supply side in the US is, is made of, of uh, a less than clean uh, production uh, component. And at the same time, you've had declining uh, economic, or I should say, flat economic activity for a number of years through this um, economic crisis, which is starting to show signs of ending. And if people start spending more money on their houses and uh, industrial production starts to ramp up, as we think it will, you'll suddenly see a lot more demand put on the market at a time when, when energy is either being constrained in supply or being modified in how it's produced. So you, you'll, you will see a rather major imbalance happening in the next few years. What could be the upshot of these imbalances? Um, what would be the, the, the repercussions, basically, if people don't start to make these differences? Well, we already see with, uh, in the past, brownouts in, in, in the US in the summer. Uh, a typical household runs 40% of its energy bill through air conditioning. And there's active advertising to ask people to use their utilities late at night, like washing machines and dryers. And uh, so far, this has had a limited effect. People will run their air conditioning all day long, whether they're in the house or not. If you look at the US from space at night, it's all highly illuminated. No one switches the lights off. So I think uh, you're seeing now the cost of electricity rising because of uh, de demand supply imbalance and that the need to reinvest in infrastructure. And so houses are starting to look at, well, can we generate our own electricity? Can we uh, move towards solar and wind and generate what we need rather than pay for an increasingly expensive commodity energy, which we always believed in the past was like water. It's just there, it's cheap, it's available, and no one has to wor be worried about supply. So we have spoken about the consumption side a little bit, and you're mentioning um, supply, but what are the hurdles? There's a lot of um, emphasis put on fossil fuels, on nuclear, as you mentioned, but how do we move away from these, would you say? Well, the problem, of course, is, is lobbying, that the oil and gas industry is extremely strong in the US. The mining communities are very strong lobbying, so you'll still see uh, a drive towards maintaining the fossil fuel dependence. Nuclear, of course, is now a little bit more uh, of a concern based on what happened in Japan uh, several years ago. But the US is starting to improve uh, its use of renewables. It has a, a large sun belt, it has a strong wood, uh, wind footprint. So we're now seeing the growing number of wind farms and, and solar farms, as well as uh, state and federal credits for, for businesses and households now move to renewable sources, either 100% or partially uh, or par partial supply of their household. So legislation is improving. And at the state level, states are, are pushing initiatives for microgrid, uh, independence of, of towns, communities, especially remote communities in particular. And you're seeing all of a sudden uh, a wake up after in light of several storms in the last couple of years in the US where millions of homes without electricity for weeks on end. That suddenly it's like, we can't take this for granted anymore. What can we do with our vast environment, with its resources, to harness and produce our own electricity? What about your involvement in the US, City Windmills? What are you, how are you reaching out over there? 
Well, we, uh, we have a, uh, a, a subsidiary in the US and we are working with the US government to manufacture our small wind turbines which will go on the roof of your house or your business. So we are empowering the, the homeowner or the business owner to generate their own electricity and legislation supports uh, 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 good pricing uh, for, for that electricity produced at home either as, as a, um, an offset against the electricity bills they receive or even uh, dependence when, when the supply drops through uh, an outage uh, you can run your home or, or the, the essential part of your home on, on the supply of the small wind turbines that we are looking to produce. So we're really, really tapping a cheaper alternative to solar which is quite expensive still uh, but with a good wind footprint in the US it makes sense to look at small turbines for the home that allow you or, or business owner to, to run partially your, your electricity. How do the prices compare to traditional means would you say? Quite favourably. Uh, understand the traditional means are the grid which, which uh, is in need of constant uh, repair uh, with power lines dropping all the time with, with storms. It's very expensive as a utility company to keep that supply running to, to households and to businesses. And the cost with technology has dropped tremendously over the last few years where solar is a lot more affordable now. Wind is starting to uh, uh, appear at the household or business level as opposed to the large wind farms. So it also is seeing a, a, a drop in, in, in pricing therefore more affordability. So it's becoming a viable alternative to the grid connection for your house. Fantastic. And we've spoken predominantly about the US, but what, how do the trends in the US compare to the rest of the world, for example? Well, the US uh, likes its, its oil and gas, its gas guzzling with its cars. It, it, as I said, it leaves its lights on. Europe, where the pricing is much higher and there's more dependency on import for energy from uh, oil, gas, coal, and also with nuclear uh, being phased out. Uh, I think uh, the, the US has lagged behind uh, Europe in particular in appreciating the expense of energy and therefore the need to conserve it. Uh, that's now starting to change. There is awareness, especially because of these storms and outages, that, that the US needs to have a little bit more dependency and be more energy conscious. And that, that, that is certainly being seen from uh, the presidential office all the way down to street level. Fantastic. Okay. Well, David, thank you very much for your, your insights you. today. Very interesting once again. Thank you thank indeed. You. Now that's all from David and myself. Don't forget here at Dukoskopu we have our Commodities Corners on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so please do click back for that. Bye for now.